This is a stone. It's an object made of tiny particles called atoms. And just like any other object that we can see, this stone can only exist in one place at one time. But what about the things that we can't see, such as atoms? Subatomic particles such as atoms behave unlike our everyday objects. In fact, they can actually exist in a superposition, in multiple places at once. But the moment we observe them, they actually change their state to being in just one position. This is what makes them so fascinating and unique. But this video's topic is the Schrodinger equation. It's a way to find out properties of these particles, their energy, their momentum, their approximate position, and much, much more. But due to the odd behavior of these particles, scientists have to use the Schrodinger equation. For a stone, we would use Newton's second law of motion to find out its properties. But what does everything in this equation mean? Let's have a look. Okay, so starting off with this, it's a Greek alphabet called psi, which presents the particle's wave function. A wave function of a particle is just a mathematical model that when graphed can tell you all sorts of information about a particle. But the cool part comes here. Suppose you have a friend who you know so well that you even know what he could be doing every day during the lockdown. If you were to guess, you would say that he had a 60% chance of watching television, a 30% chance of sleeping, and just a 10% chance of doing his homework. But when you open the door, you only see him do one of them. Most of the time, it will be watching TV. To visualize this example better, we could open the door once every day for 10 days and we would see that most of the time he would watch television. Subatomic particles work similarly, except you can't predict the location of a particle or what it's doing because you don't know it really well. Well, let me tell you this, the Schrodinger equation definitely does. Now let's try a similar example, except this time it's just with an atom inside a box. When we solve for the wave function of a particle and then square it, it actually tells us the probability, the chance of the particle existing in points of space-time. Because of this, we can see the places inside the box where the particle has the highest chances of being when we open the box. And just like your friend, if we keep repeating this experiment, we will see that most of the time, the particle will appear at the highest peaks, in the most likely locations. Moving on to the Hamiltonian operator. It's a simple sum which adds the kinetic and potential energies of just one particle or many particles at a point of space-time. In different points, this Hamiltonian value will change just like the wave function. The Schrodinger equation includes two constants, I and reduced Planck's constant. These are just two really helpful numbers used in quantum physics a lot that relate with how particles work. Now this fraction over here shows how the wave function changes with time, and more accurately, by how much it changes. This notation is used to describe how something changes as something else changes. It's simply called differentiation. Thanks to the scientists involved in this major breakthrough, we now really understand how the particles that make up our universe actually work. Now we can calculate almost anything about a subatomic particle. And the Schrodinger equation has actually been used several times to solve real world problems. If you thought this was interesting, try researching a bit more. After all, this is just the start of quantum physics. Thanks for watching.